A very good evening aspirants. Welcome to the Hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is 28th of August 2023. Displayed here are the list of news articles that we are going to discuss today. As you can see, for the convenience of the students, we have chosen news articles from yesterday's newspaper as well. Now before getting into the news article discussion, I have two important announcements to make. The first one is regarding the most awaited pre-storming prelims 2024 test series. The orientation for the test series will be starting on 11th September 2023 and the first test will be on 18th September 2023. The fee structure is displayed here. You can go through it. The second announcement is regarding All India Open Mock Test for Mains 2023. The test will be starting on 1st September 2023. For further details, you can check the link in the description. Please don't miss the chance. Use it wisely to boost your answers in the mains 2023. So with this announcement, let us move on to the news article discussion. Look at this FAQ article from yesterday's newspaper. As you all know, ISRO is engaging in a wide range of activities which includes research, satellite system development, collaboration with other agencies, rocket production, satellite operation, orbital debris management and many more. The article tries to explain the future missions of ISRO after Chandrayaan 3. It also talks about the research projects that ISRO is currently working on. So we'll see the important points mentioned in the news article. Very important news article. There might be a prelims question in this topic. Okay, so make note of it. And as we all know, on August 23rd, Chandrayaan 3's lander safely reached the moon's surface. With this, India became the fourth country to softly land a robotic device on the moon. This was the first successful soft landing in the moon's south pole region. This success has actually enhanced the trust in ISRO at international level. With this achievement of Chandrayaan 3, ISRO is currently focusing on several key projects. We'll see them one by one. First in the list is Gaganyaan mission. See, Gaganyaan is India's first human spaceflight mission. Under this mission, three flights will be sent into orbit. There will be two unmanned flights and one manned space flight. The mission will send three astronauts to space for a minimum of seven days. Note that the spacecraft will be placed in a low earth orbit, in short called as LEO, of 300 to 400 kilometers. The mission is expected to be launched in 2024. This mission is significant one because it will make India the fourth country in the world to send human to space. ISRO is currently conducting tests on launch vehicle Mark 3, LVM 3, to ensure the safety of Gaganyaan mission. Now, the second important project is reusable launch vehicle RLV. See, currently the rockets in ISRO can be used only once. But now they are developing a new launch vehicle called reusable launch vehicle which can be used multiple times to launch satellites into space. RLV is expected to lift 20 tons payload to low earth orbit. Its design resembles the NASA space shuttle with a winged body. Now the third significant project is SCE-200 or the semi-cryogenic engine 200. See, it is a powerful rocket engine that uses refined kerosene and light oxygen as propellants. The engine is being developed for use in the next generation of ISRO rockets. Note that this engine will be used for the Gaganyaan mission as well. Fourth important project is small satellite launch vehicle, in short called as SSLV. See, ISRO is developing a small rocket than PSLV for launching small satellites. The SSLV is designed to be an affordable platform for mini, micro or nano satellites. It has payload capacity to deliver 500 kg to low earth orbit or 300 kg to sun synchronous orbit. Next important project that is under development is XPOSAT. See, XPOSAT stands for X-ray Polarimeter Satellite. 
it is a collaboration between isro and raman research institute in bengaluru the mission is aimed at studying various dynamics of astronomical sources in extreme conditions note that it is the world's second polarimeter mission under x-ray another important future mission of isro is lunar polar exploration in short called as lupex mission see it is a joint mission between india and japan the mission will send a lander and a rover to the moon's south pole the important thing about this mission is that it will demonstrate night survival see the night on moon last for 14 earth days during a lunar night there is no light and the temperature could drop to minus 180 degree celsius so this exploration will be a crucial mission to demonstrate the survival of rover in these extreme conditions the lander will provide power and shelter for the rover during the lunar night the launch vehicle and the rover for this mission will be provided by japan and the lander will be provided by isro lastly we'll see about metalox which is also an important project that is currently under development in isro see metalox is a type of rocket fuel that is made up of liquid methane and liquid oxygen it is a new fuel and has several advantages over traditional rocket fuels like kerosene and hydrogen it is more effective safer and easy to handle than traditional rocket fuels so these are all some of the important missions of isro make note of them and revise it whenever you get time in this news article discussion we saw about isro's project in human space flight reusable technology advanced engines and efficient satellite launch so with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion take a look at this news article from sunday's newspaper according to the article the pradhan mantri jandhan yojana in short called as pm jdy completes 9 years of implementation today so the article provides some data on the performance of the scheme the news article says that as of middle of august more than 50 crore bank accounts have been opened under the pm jandhan yojana and the total deposit with the jandhan accounts have crossed 2 lakh crore rupees so now the average deposit in pm jdy accounts has increased to around 4000 rupees since the average deposit amount increased the government said that it is now working with banks and ministries to persuade jandhan account holders to opt for insurance schemes like Pradhan Mantri Jeevan Jyoti Bima Yojana and Pradhan Mantri Shuraksha Bima Yojana This is about the article given here Using this as an opportunity let us revise few points about Pradhan Mantri Jandhan Yojana See PM JDY was launched on 28th August 2014 It was started as a national mission to ensure financial inclusion of all the households in our country Here the term financial inclusion means the method of offering banking and financial services to every individual in the society without any form of discrimination. In other words, the term financial inclusion refers to the policy of extending banking, financial and insurance services to the poor section of the population at affordable rates. In that line, PM JDY envisages to provide universal access to banking facilities. The scheme aims to make sure that every household has at least one basic bank account. Talking about the objectives of the scheme, the main objective of PM JDY is to provide access to various financial services to the excluded sections that is weaker sections and low income groups. Under the scheme, some of the financial services like basic savings bank account, access to credit, remittances facility, insurance and pension are provided to the excluded sections if you ask who can open bank accounts under pm jdy see under the scheme any person who does not have any bank account can open a basic savings cum deposit account they can open an account in any bank branch or through a business correspondent called as bank mitra outlets so what are the benefits of the pm jdy scheme 
see the first benefit is that an unbanked person will get one basic savings bank account under the chandan scheme the second benefit is that there is no requirement to maintain any minimum balance in pmjdy accounts thirdly a rupee debit card is provided to the pmjdy account holder then fourthly accident insurance cover of up to rupees 2 lakh is provided to pradhan mantri janadan yojana account holders who are having rupee debit card and finally pmjdy accounts are eligible to get direct benefit transfer in short called as dbt and they can also enroll in some insurance schemes like pradhan mantri jeevan jyoti bima yojana pm jjby pradhan mantri suraksha bima yojana pm sby and so on that's all you have to know about pradhan mantri jandan yojana with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion take a look at this data point it provides some data about disease burden in india and in the world recently a collaborative study was conducted by the indian institute of science of bangalore and the leiden university of netherlands the study shows that there is a misalignment between funded research area and health challenges in india this means that india is not conducting research on the priority health areas rather it focuses on inferior areas the study also highlights that india's investment in healthcare research is very limited which means that india is not focusing more on health research so the data point highlights that all the above mentioned factors have contributed to disease burden in india this data point provides some valuable information about the burden of various diseases so we'll understand these points in detail see to have a better understanding about the data we should first understand what is disability adjusted life year in short called as dalys this is because the data that we are going to see now is expressed in dalys basically the disability adjusted life year is used to calculate disease burden it is nothing but the sum of years that the person loses in his life due to premature death and disability to put it in simple words dali is expressed as the number of years lost by a person due to ill health disability or early death generally the lost year is compared with standardized life expectancy to arrive at a dali's if you find it little bit confusing let me explain it with an example now let us consider a person named arun while he was 30 he met with an accident and he was severely injured because of severe injury the doctor advised him to take bed rest for 2 years so he wasn't able to work for 2 years here arun has lost 2 years of productive life and let us assume that arun died at an age of 55 see in india the life expectancy is around 70 years of age but arun has died at the age of 55 so he lost another 15 years due to premature death now using this data we will calculate the disability adjusted life year of arun before that just take a look at this formula to arrive at dali we have to add the years lived with disability and years of life lost now coming to arun's case Arun had lived 2 years with the disability and he lost 15 years of life due to early death. We have to add these two now. If we add it would be 17 years, right? So the disability adjusted life year of Arun is 17 years. Here Arun might have died early because he might have affected with diseases like cancer, TB and so on. So like this way dali helps us to understand various disease burden now let us see what the data actually indicates look at this first chart this chart shows india's relative disease burden against the health research publications in the same period the relative disease burden is represented in dark sky blue color and the research efforts is represented in light sky blue color by looking at this chart we can observe some misalignments see some diseases like diabetes mellitus oral conditions and kidney diseases are having a high share of health research publications 
but it is disproportionate to their burden for example let us take diabetes mellitus the share of diabetes mellitus is total disease burden which was just 3.1 percentage but its share in research publication was 7.5 percentage on the other hand the share of neonatal condition in the dali was 12.3 percentage but its share in publication was only 1.3 percentage here we could witness a mismatch right so from this we can say that india is not conducting research on priority area this is about chart 1 now look at this chart 2 this chart contains five sub charts these charts show relative disease burden against research efforts for certain diseases it compares data across various groups like high income groups upper middle income nations india and low income countries look at this chart 2a this chart shows the relative disease burden against research efforts for neonatal conditions across regions here the research share remains the same across different groups of countries but if we take the disease burden it is much higher in india and low income countries so we can say that india is performing poorly in research on neonatal conditions look at this 2b chart this chart shows that relative disease burden against research efforts for cardiovascular diseases here we could see that research share is low across all economic groups despite the high disease burden or dally for cardiovascular diseases the research efforts are low now coming to chart 2c this chart shows the relative disease burden against research efforts for cancer the disease burden for cancer is low across the groups but there is a substantial research attention on cancer disease for example in india cancer contributed to less than 5 percentage of disease burden but they accounted for nearly 22 percentage of its research publications now moving on to chart 2d this chart shows that relative disease burden against research effort for tuberculosis here we could witness that there is a good match between disease burden and considerable research focus across various groups but if we take india the disease burden of tb is around 7 percentage and the research focus is around 5 percentage it is said that the rising threat of multi-drug resistant tb enhances the disease burden of tb in india now coming to the final chart the chart 2e shows that the relative disease burden against research efforts for malaria here we could witness all the groups performed well india is also focusing more on the research but the problem here is that the disease may pose a considerable global threat if we see the world average the disease burden is higher than that of research efforts so the world governments must collaborate to tackle malaria in future that's all regarding this news article with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion take a look at this news article it talks about the aditya l1 mission of isro see this mission was expected to be launched next month to study the sun the news article mentions about payloads launch vehicles and the importance of the mission so in this news article discussion we will understand some of the important points mentioned in the news article firstly let us start with basics about aditya l1 mission see aditya l1 will be the first indian mission to study the sun in sanskrit aditya means the sun that is why the mission is named as aditya the satellite will be placed at the lagrangian point one this point is 1.5 million kilometers from the earth it is because of this point the mission is named as aditya l1 mission so what is the speciality of placing the satellite at l1 point see at this point the satellite has a major advantage of continuously viewing the sun without any obstruction or eclipse the spacecraft will carry seven payloads to observe the photosphere chromosphere and the outermost layer of the sun using electromagnetic and particle detectors so with this basic information let us discuss the important points mentioned in the article see the payloads of aditya l1 mission are developed by space physics laboratory spl 
SPL is a National Laboratory of the Vikram Sarabhai Space Center VSSC and it is located in Thiruvananthapuram. It conducts research in atmosphere, space and planetary science. The Space Physics Laboratory contributed two payloads for Chandrayaan-3. They were Chandra's Surface Thermophysical Experiment in short called as CHA-STE and Radio Anatomy of Moon Bound Hypersensitive Ionosphere and Atmosphere in short called as RAMBA. Just now I said Aditya L1 mission has totally 7 scientific payloads right. One of them is Plasma Analyzer Packing for Aditya in short called as PAPA. This payload is developed by this Space Physics Laboratory. Its purpose is to study the composition of solar wind and enhance our understanding of it. Here the solar wind means the continuous flow of charged particles emitted by the sun. This PAPA payload will investigate the energy levels of electrons as well as the energy and mass of protons and ions within the solar wind. The study will also find the changes in direction of solar wind. ISRO will also use an Excel version of Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle PSLV to launch the Aditya L1 spacecraft in a low earth orbit. Once launched, it will require 125 days to reach its destination at Lagrangian point 1 or L1 point. Since Aditya L1 is going to be launched next month, it is very important to know specific information about Aditya L1 mission. That is why we chose this news article from today's newspaper. So with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Take a look at this text and context article. According to the article, in the past couple of years, the central government's budget allocation to the Ministry of Minority Affairs has declined. In addition to this, the government has discontinued two key educational schemes for religious minorities. This is about the article given here. So in this context, we shall focus on why scholarships are provided for religious minorities, what are the scholarships that are extended to the religious minorities, some evidences citing the decrease in budget allocation and finally the need for educational scholarships. Now before that the syllabus relevant to this news article is highlighted here for your reference. You can go through it. First let us see why scholarship are provided to religious minorities mainly the Muslim community. See India is a diverse country with people practicing various religions. It is home to over 30 crore people from religious minority communities. Muslims are the largest religious minority. Despite being the largest minority community in India, Muslims in India face challenges in various sectors. First, take the Sachar Committee report. The Justice Rajinder Sachar Committee was constituted by the UPA government. This committee was constituted to look into the social, economic and educational standing of Muslims in India. In its report, the committee mentioned that Muslim minority was neglected in almost all dimensions of development. The report stated that by and large, Muslims rank somewhat above SC or ST but below Hindu OBCs and other minorities across all indicators. So to address this parity, scholarships must be provided. The next reason is that Muslims in India are mainly engaging in informal jobs which lack social security. This is mainly due to the fact that literacy rate among Muslims is low. As per census 2011, the literacy rate of the minority communities like Christians, Jains, Sikhs and Buddhists is higher than the national average of 72.98% except Muslims which is 68.54%. The reason why literacy rate is lower among Muslims is due to lack of affordability and higher dropout rate. So to improve affordability and incentivize Muslims to get educated, the government must provide some incentives like educational scholarships. Additionally, scholarships will also ensure retention of Muslim students in educational institutions and address the issue of dropouts. See, education alone can break the cycle of poverty and lack of opportunities faced by minority students. And to improve access to education, 
scholarships must be provided it will also help muslim students get into formal employment next scholarship helps reduce disparities so educational scholarships help bridge the educational and socio economic disparities between communities finally providing scholarships signals the government's commitment to inclusion and upliftment of minority communities this helps in fostering social harmony and equality among communities so these are the reasons why scholarships are provided to religious minorities mainly muslims to address the problems faced by the minority community and give the minority community a focused attention the government of india in 2006 established the ministry of minority affairs the government also formulated various welfare programs with special emphasis on religious minorities these schemes and programs have been designed to address educational disparities among religious minorities in india by providing financial support now let us see some of these welfare programs see the first one is the pre metric scholarship scheme the scheme aims to provide scholarship to minority students in classes 1 to 10 to encourage education financial incentive in the range of rupees 1000 to 10700 per candidate is provided under the scheme but recently the government discontinued scholarships for class 1 to 8 So currently minority students in class 9 and 10 only are provided scholarship under this scheme. The second scheme is post metric scholarship scheme. See as the name indicated, the scheme provides scholarships to minority students in class 11 and above. The scholarship is provided to ensure access to quality higher education. Financial incentive in the range of Two thousand three hundred rupees to fifteen thousand rupees per candidate is provided under the scheme. Recently, the government increased funding for this scheme. It was increased from five hundred and fifteen crore rupees to thousand and sixty-five crore rupees in the current fiscal year. The next one is the merit cum means scholarship scheme. Through this scheme, the government aims to provide access to professional and technical. courses at at undergraduate and postgraduate levels see under this scheme eligible students that is meritorious students are reimbursed full course fees or 20000 rupees per annum recently the fund allocated for this scheme was significantly reduced it was reduced to 44 crore rupees from 365 crore rupees The next scheme is the Maulana Azad National Fellowship in short called as MANF. Through this scheme the government aims to provide financial assistance to research scholars pursuing MPhil and PhD. Under this scheme the government provides a grant of 31000 rupees for junior research fellows. For senior research fellows a stipend of 35000 rupees per month is provided. Till now, the scheme has benefited over six thousand seven hundred candidates. But recently, in two thousand twenty-two, the government has discontinued the scheme. The next scheme is Pado Pardesh scheme. This scheme provides financial support for economically weaker minority students who aims to pursue studies overseas. Under this scheme, the government provides interest subsidies on their educational loans. but this scheme was also discontinued from 2022 likewise there are other schemes like beham hazrat mahal national scheme then naya savira program and schemes like providing education to mother shas and minorities in short called as spemm so these are all some of the educational related programs established for the welfare of the minorities However you can clearly notice that except for the post metric scholarship scheme all other programs have either witnessed a budget cut or they are discontinued the center for budget and governance accountability's 2022 report has also highlighted this only the 2022 cbga report highlighted that the budget expenditure for minority welfare was not in line with proportional representation the report also highlighted that most of the allocated budget is utilized only in the last quarter of the financial year this delayed utilization of funds 
has also resulted in delayed scholarship disbursement and hampering the academic progress of beneficiaries the decline in funding has led to some other negative impacts on religious minorities as well the other negative impacts include reduced beneficiary numbers low expenditure on scholarship and reduction in access to education and opportunities finally if you ask how these issues can be addressed see following the recommendation of niti ayog can be the first step firstly niti ayog suggest enhancing pre metric post metric and metric cum means scholarships along with national overseas scholarship through a 15 percentage annual increase from 2019 to 20 then to promote gender equality niti ayog recommends a 10 percentage annual increase in the number of scholarships for girls from minority communities implementing these niti ayog recommendations can effectively enable the government to tackle the educational disparities experienced by religious minorities in our nation so that's all regarding this news article so these learned points now let us move on to the next part of the news article discussion which is the preliminary practice question discussion today we have two questions first question is regarding solar wind you have to find the incorrect option here option c is the incorrect option see solar wind emerges from the sun's outer layer called corona and it does not emerges from sun's core region except that all the other options are correct regarding solar wind we saw that in the news article discussion part itself so the correct answer for this question is option c now moving on this question is about pradhan mantri jandhan yojana the question asks pmjdy has been launched for option a providing housing loan to poor people at cheaper interest rates option b promoting women's self help groups in backward areas option c promoting financial inclusion in the country and option d providing financial help to the marginalized communities see here the option c and d are little bit confusing actually the correct answer is option c promoting financial inclusion in the country see the aim of the scheme itself to avoid discrimination in financial inclusion so the correct answer for the question is option c displayed here are the main practice questions for you today just go through the question try to answer it in the comment section with this we came to the end of the news article discussion if you like the video hit like do comment and don't forget to subscribe to shankar ias academy youtube channel now thank you for listening